Okay, I'm Todd Burke, and today we're gonna to do something fun. It's gonna start with some learning. If you're like me and you saw the movie The Martian, there's a scene in there where <clears throat> the hero of the story has to figure out how to communicate back to Earth, and there's only a camera, and all the camera can do is turn. No audio. The only information they can send back would be by moving the camera's position. And he decides to code a whole conversation in hexadecimal. And he sets about doing it and is quite heroic. And sitting there watching that movie, all I could think about is, I am so dumb. <laughs> How do people really know this stuff? How does hexadecimal work? That's what we're going to talk about today. So our first number system is the decimal system. It's what we're familiar with already. It's also called base 10. You maybe haven't heard that before, but that's because it's based on 10 decimals. Like we have 10 digits on our fingers and each digit is a power of 10. So we call this number one. You could write it this way. There'd be no reason to, but either way you're gonna call that one because there's one digit in the um, first decimal. And that placeholder, is, everything gets multiplied by one. Uh, we could have uh, uh, the number 10. And <clears throat> in that case, we have nothing in the ones column, but we have one element here in the second digit in the uh, tens column. And what that means is everything in this column gets multiplied by 10. <clears throat> We'd call that 10. We could write down the number 19 this way. So we have 110. We have uh, in the tens column only one. So one times 10 is one. Plus we have nine of these individual ones from the ones column. And so we take the total from the first digit, nine, and we add it to the total from the second digit, 10. Nine and 10 is 19. That's what we call the number 19. You know this stuff. And so it's it's pretty simple for us. This would be the number 47, and this would be the number 236. <clears throat> what you maybe don't think of is each place value is a power of 10. So 10 to the zero, 10 raised to the zero is going to be a one. 10 to the one to the first power is 10, 10 to the second power is 100. And so these are the powers of 10 and they make up our place values in our decimal system, our base 10 system. Very simple. Those same rules will apply to other number systems. Okay, well, the name of this talk is number systems because there's lots of number systems. This is just what's familiar to us. <clears throat> so I wanna talk about this number system. Binary here is what computers use. Computers have electric circuits that can either be on or off, only two states, which is what binary means. This number system is the one that all computers are based on. Underneath the language Java or JavaScript or whatever, the very base level, it's all a matter of ones and zeros because that means either on or off to an electronic device like a computer. So they use what we call base two. <clears throat> now, the place values in base two are based on the number two. And so they're based on the powers of two. In the first column, two to the zero is a one. So all of your ones would go here. Two to the zero, two to the one power would be a two. Two squared would be four. Two to the third would be eight. And just like here with the base 10 system, each place value is multiplied by 10. Here with the base two system, each place value is multiplied by two, so they double. One, two, four, eight, you can guess the next one would be 16, and so on. Now, a small number then gets spread out uh, quite a bit. Uh, in base two, it's not very efficient. Uh, you take a small number like 50, it's a huge number in base 10, but it's the only thing that a computer can really understand. So uh, I'm gonna show you an example here. The number one is gonna be the same. Whoa, except for my marker is dead. So I'll try this one. Number one could be written, like for example, uh, all computer code is written into packets of eight numbers. Started out as seven, now it's eight, that's called a byte. If you have half of that, a packet of four, they call it a nibble. So here we go. You would actually write the zeros there for the computer. We don't need that. So I did this here and I don't know why I'm being so, you know. But 
Here we need that in base two. Now, can you guess what the number 10 would look like? I'll call this number one. And here I'm not gonna bother writing out all the words, all the letters, but I'll just draw them. What would 10 look like? If we wanna do that in base two, well, here's how you think it through. You start on the far left, and so you have um, 32 and 16, and you get to eight and then four. You wanna find the biggest one of these numbers that's a little smaller than, than your target. So 10 works, it's just a little bit bigger than this place value, the fourth place value there in the eights. If I go up to 16, I double this to the next one, now that won't work, this is too small. 10 isn't big enough to have any 16s in it, but it does have some eights, right? It has exactly one eight. Okay, so then if I subtract that eight, there's only two left. So I don't have enough in my remainder for anything in the fours column. So I write a zero here. I have two left. I had eight. 10 minus eight leaves two. I've got one of these, and that's everything. Um, my eight plus my two got me my full value of 10. <clears throat> so I had no remainder for the ones column. This number, 1010, zero, zero, is how you would say 10 in base two. All right, so let's try now 11. It's going to be this plus one more, right? So we can just know, you know, make a guess here. It's going to look like that. That means I have one eight plus two more. That's 10 plus one is 11. Let's try 14. Okay, so if I write down the number here, 14. Are there any eights? Yes. Are there any 16s? No, it's not big enough to have any anything in the 16s column. So the first thing we would have is we'd have one eight here. All right, now eight taken out of that number would leave a remainder of six, right? So 14 minus eight is six. Uh, is that bigger than four? Yes. Yeah. So I could pull one four out of that. And then would there be anything left over? Let's see, four, uh, six minus four would be two remainder, so I'd have one of these for the twos column, and two minus two is zero, so I have nothing here. That's how you say the number 14 in base two. It's one, 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 zero. <clears throat> Let's do one more. We're gonna make that bigger by one. We're gonna make it a 15. We're probably just gonna add a one here. Boom, 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 boom. That's my 15. Let's just see. I got an eight plus four is 12. Plus two more is 14, plus one more is 15. Okay, so these number systems are called positional notation. And they're pretty logical and they're weird. So they take some practice. Uh, once you make a number like this, you know, and do that 10 times, you get some repetition. You might do the reverse. Uh, take a number like this and interpret it. Okay, so I've got, uh, and I'd start on the left. I've got an eight plus a four plus a two. And just add them all up, plus a one, that's gonna be 15. So now the question is, what is hexadecimal? The, um, <clears throat> simple answer is it's a number system that has six hex stands for six 16 symbols in every column meaning every decimal every place value has up to 16 different symbols it could be and in the ones column if you get up to 16 and then go on i guess to 16, it would move on to the next column. So you'd have the ones column and the 16s column. And then everything in that column would be a multiple of 16. If you have two in that column, it means you have two times 16, which is 32. All right. So the power, the uh, place values as we make our little grid are determined by the powers of 16, the ones column, the 16s column, 16 times 16, which is 256, and so on. But let's back up a little. There's 16 symbols. We got to come up with some extra symbols. Which what are they going to be? Zero through nine is easy. That makes sense. So our symbols are going to start there. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're going to run out of symbols here, and we need to continue because we can have bigger numbers before we have to move the second place value in uh, uh, a larger sum. So in our notation here in hexadecimal. We continue up to 15 before then we then say, oh, now we need to carry the one and start uh, another number. <clears throat> so 
we would then say we can't use 10 here because that's actually two symbols. We're going to just use letters. That's why these symbol systems are called alphanumeric. They're alphabet number letters and numbers. So we say then this and is dying stands for the, the number 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14. I hope that's coming through. F is 15. So we're going to say then we have a number system that starts with um, the ones column the ones column. And then that could be up to 15 before you need to start the next column, which would be the 16s column. So then we would have the second place value would be multiples of 16. If you say that each one of these will be a power of 16, 16 times 16 will be 256. That's a little bit hard to read. 256. And the last column will be 1,536. 1,536. Okay. So let's say that we have the number 1,537. So let's say that we had here 1,000. 537, we'd have one of these and just one left over. We wouldn't have anything else for this column or this column, and we'd have one of those. That's what in hexadecimal, the number 1,537 that we would use in our decimal system. That's how you would write it in the hexadecimal system. So let's take another one. Let's say that we're going to Let's take the number one, obviously, would be just a one here. Let's take the number 15. So we fill up this column, the number 15 next. <laughs> Strange that you just see an F in hex, that means you have 15. So now let's say that we have 16. All right, take that plus one. We have to say we've got none of those. We actually would start writing this from the left. We've got 116, and then we have nothing over on the um, uh, ones column. <clears throat> now, we do when we do our math tend to start from the right, move to the left, and then carry the one. Um, and what that means is we have uh, one of the tens column, in this case, one of the sixteens column. So uh, typically, when you're trying to convert, and learn a new number system. It's helpful to go from the left to the right. So you'd say first, do we have any 16s? Yes, is there anything left over? No. So one zero is how in hexadecimal you write the number 16. Let's take uh, the number 512. That actually happens to be exactly 256 times two. So what that means is we have two of these in that column and nothing left over. So 20 in hex system is the number 200, 512. And this is how you can see this becomes beneficial if you're going to take a lot of data and compress it into a smaller notation with fewer symbols. Um, let's say we add to that 15. So then we'd have the number 527. And what we'd say is, I did this wrong. I was talking and I think I did something wrong. Did you catch my mistake? This is the 16th column. And 512 is twice 256. So we'd have two of these and nothing left over. So there's our 500. And 12. Now, to do this number, 527, we'd have 
two of, of these 256s and a remainder of 15. So we don't have anything left for the 16s column. And we have 15 for the ones column. So this number, 527 in hexadecimal is 20F. Two in the 256th column, zero in the 16th place, and F in the ones place. 20F. Okay. This is the ASCII table, your new best friend. It's basically a cheat sheet. It has all the information you need to move things from our number system into hex or from hexadecimal system and to a number you can understand. Um, and there's a third system there. Um, you can see the categories um, at the top left of the corner are decimal, hex, and then care, which is character. And that is a more complex communication system. That has basically all the numbers. Um, it then has <clears throat> not all the numbers, has numbers. It has letters, both capital letters and lowercase letters. And then it has a bunch of, bunch of punctuation. So you can do a whole lot of complex communication. It's a pretty sophisticated language, 127 symbols, and you can shorten it all into hex. Uh, so for starters, let's review a little bit. Hex has 16 symbols, zero through F. <clears throat> if you look at the top left, the corner in that, of the table, in that first column, both the purple system are decimal numbers that go from zero to 127. Both that symbol or that column and the red one next to it, which is hexadecimal, they both start with zero and they go through the symbols one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the hex column, the second column in red, continues. So when we hit number 10, it says capital A, which is the hex symbol for 10, all the way through F the hex symbol for 15. So it is uh, familiar. It's consistent with what I just told you. The um, Green's language there is just a communication system and we can translate it into hex as well and back and you know vice versa by going from the red column to the green column or from the green column to the red column. So let's just try that real fast. Uh, Let's say we're going to say my name, Todd. You'd want to go to the third row, third, sorry, section. And right there, you're going to see um, in, I guess, the uh, green character column, you're going to see down below the S. S is highlighted as a row in gray and right below it is T and those are capital letters. So you have capital T and you'll see that the number is 54. That's capital T for my name. And then you can find that to say my, the rest of my name, Todd, T-O-D-D, -D -D, the O is gonna be six F and that's a lowercase O and the Ds are gonna be 64. And now you've taken my name and translated it into hex pretty fast without doing any calculations using the ASCII table. So that's simple. And <clears throat> now that you've got it in your hands, we wanna give you a chance to play around. We're gonna get you uh, in groups moving around the building on a scavenger hunt. And each group is, has its own set of directions. Color coded, you wanna make sure that if you see someone else's clue, don't mess with them. Because at the end, as long as you can find your way from clue to clue and and to the end of the uh, scavenger hunt, you will be rewarded with great riches today. So um, enjoy that, work hard, help each other out. You wanna translate each clue, it's written in hex, um, <clears throat> into that character row in green so that you can understand it. And then that will be the clue to find the next, that'll be the directions to find the next clue, translate that again into the green column so you can understand it and when you're done, you'll end up with rewards beyond your wildest dreams. Good luck.